Remember, ladies and gentlemen, these people are judged on appearance. You guys have conducted yourself as a lady. And uh, many, many things I do. Last year, my mother. And this year, a fantastic young woman. I think if it wasn't her, I couldn't be what I am today. And that's my aunt, Mrs. Dorothy Hopp. Hi, sweet ass. Where are you from? New York Institute. Oh, I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yay! Yeah. Are you going to wear that like ass? Real cute. <laughs> Real cute. <laughs> Enough. <laughs> you can do us a favor, why don't you give us a drink? <laughs> well, oh, come on, we'll give you a lot of time. <laughs> Just give us a drink. I'm almost... Uh, sco two scotch and water. Oh, she did your hair like I did last week. Two scotch and water. So, why not? We would like to go at this time. I, I, it was sort of an honor last night someone came to our bar and was talking about the judging and our costumes on review. And it seems like whenever you get a large gathering of this thing, someone's always happy that they didn't win. They wish they had won. They have the lady not to win. So they have to blame it on me or the judges. Okay? So this year we went to Grand Street to get all the judges. Also, ladies and gentlemen, a man that's not new to the theater, has been around a long time in that field, good with the theater and the other places, Mr. Bob McCoy, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Bob McCoy. To win this fabulous contest. I know, I heard you say that. Sorry. <laughs> I'm nervous, I can tell you that much. There was three of them this year. One is always at the Chicago Sheridan, which is a traditionally black, uh, a black ball that formerly was at the uh, Coliseum for years and years. They always draw a good crowd because their crowd is their own particular group. But there was one also at the Playboy Club this year, which was a competitor of mine who was written up in National Magazine saying that uh, he had gave me my start and this sort of thing, which I should have got a little upset with, but I just let it go as bad. At one type of advertisement as good as another. And we drew the number that we drew. I don't know the exact number that was there, but he drew 44 people. So I, I, I think uh, it pretty much wipes out that segment of competition, which is bad because you don't really know how to plan and how to keep going when you don't have a competitor. Honda Hooker. Contestant number one, ladies and gentlemen. Honda Hooker. Honda Hooker. Honda Hooker. Honda Hooker. Honda Hooker. Honda How should I talk? What? Oh, I'm a dancer. I'm a professional dancer at the Vista in Chicago. And um, I've been dancing there. Tonight's my anniversary. I've been there one year. 
So I thought I'd come here and try a contest. I was finalist last week at the Miss Windy City contest. And I've had a lot of fun so far. I hope I'm a finalist. Okay? Thank you. Good witch of the north, excuse me. Number 20, Raggedy Ann and Andy. that um, this government, if it keeps going, will be a military dictatorship because um, Senator Kennedy, the first Kennedy who became president, was murdered. And this president, Michelle Fox, ladies and gentlemen, was um, murdered. And the third Kennedy was stationed and died with Joanne Capetney. But Joanne Kopetny, uh, according to uh, the latest research, uh, the latest information, Joanne Kopetny was dead when she entered the car. <laughs> I hope my 
sister got that. Look at real estate people. Real estate people will open the doors to a gay person because they know how much gay people put into an apartment, how much they fix it up, and what they contribute to it. And instead of hurting their property, they raise the value of their property. Because most of them are dealing interior decorating, or hairdressers, or artists. Look at the movie world today. How many, many great movie stars are known to be either homosexual or bisexual? So I think the public's uh, coming to the thing and with the change of laws, like, I really don't think people care anymore as long as you do your thing at home.
Well, as you remember that night, the uh, person was on the stage much too long. I think he was sort of rude to everyone by staying on there. You really don't know if it's due to the crowd inspiring him or, you know, he was new in the thing and he just got nervous and they applauded and they kept him on stage or what. But after it went on and on and on, I thought it was in bad taste, so I disqualified it from the judging, which I felt was just since being equal to everybody. crowd reacted very strangely and very uh, childish, I think. I'm surprised that we have a dog there and we don't know what fair play is. Go to the Miss Gay America pageant in Atlanta, Georgia, and you'll see how strict rules are abided by. Rules are meant to be broken, and that's disqualifying. This is this kind of thing going on. This is just how we get it. We're here promoting gay events, not tearing them down. I think by turning a, a hostile crowd around momentarily into a, a boisterous standing ovation, it kind of shocked me. But I'm kind of glad that it, that it happened. 87 and 42, we have that. 87 and 42. The winner is, ladies and gentlemen, number 56. But uh, I'm glad the sequence happened because many, many times people feel that the ball is a fixed thing, like every year the winner is known before you get there, which certainly shows that when I disqualified the person, I had no way of, of judging, but I always leave the judging into the hands of the judges.